It's the 24th of April 1990, and the time is 12.33pm. The Hubble telescope is about to be launched into space. The Kennedy Space Center in Florida is bustling with excitement. I was just a kid back then, but I could still tell that this was a big thing that was happening. My father, who was very much into astronomy, couldn't stop talking about this. I remember the day so clearly. He told me, Son, this is a historic day for the United States of America and the world. We are about to take a giant leap into the future. After today, we'll come to know of the existence of many other planets, stars and galaxies. It's been 30 years now. It's the 24th of December 2021 and NASA is going to launch the James Webb Space Telescope and I am just as excited as my father was when they were launching the Hubble Telescope. They say that the JWST is poised to become the most powerful telescope in space. But the question out there is, how will its photos compare to Hubble's? The Hubble Space Telescope, which was launched in the lower Earth orbit, has been responsible for showing us detailed and colourful images of galaxies and stars millions of miles away from Earth, whereas the JWST, which will be launched into the Sun-Earth Lagrange Point 2, which is roughly 1.5 million kilometres away from Earth. They expect the JWST to see objects 10 to 100 times fainter than the Hubble, and 10 billion times fainter than the naked eye. And one thing is guaranteed, that the images will be extremely detailed and specific. Let's get one thing clear. The JWST is not Hubble's replacement. They are both powerful scopes and are expected to observe the universe together. Time to get a bit technical. The Hubble detects light at an optical and ultraviolet wavelength, while the JWST detects light at infrared wavelengths. It's no surprise that the JWST has a bigger mirror than the Hubble. This feature makes the JWST a bit more superior because it has a larger information collecting area. The JWST's images might be slightly hazy as compared to the Hubble, but once you go out into infrared, you'll get a detailed image. Although the JWST essentially observes infrared light, it will also be able to observe the red-yellow part of the visible light spectrum. You'll be wondering how this works. Let me explain. The gold coating on the mirrors has been done for a reason. The gold coating absorbs blue light from the visible spectrum, and it reflects the red-yellow lights. The Hubble Space Telescope can observe infrared light as well, but since its primary function is to detect ultraviolet and visible parts of the spectrum, it sticks to doing that. The JWST is designed so that scientists can see the first stars and galaxies that were formed at the start of the universe. It can also perform all sorts of other scientific work, like observing exoplanets transiting in front of stars. The Hubble Space Telescope is the only telescope that has been serviced by astronauts. There have been five trips to the Hubble for servicing and maintenance. This is obviously not possible for the JWST, as it is so far from Earth. Now, let's move on to how much distance can these telescopes cover. The farthest that Hubble can see is 10 to 15 billion light-years away while the JWST can see 13.6 billion light-years into the past. On paper, the Hubble might be able to see more, but it won't be able to see stars and galaxies. Only the JWST will be able to do that, due to its ability to see infrared wavelengths. Does the South Atlantic anomaly affect the telescopes? The South Atlantic Anomaly is a small dent in the Earth's magnetic field that can impact satellites. Hubble, which is much closer to Earth, passes through this spot 15% of times, whereas the JWST doesn't cross paths with this anomaly, as it is so far away from the planet. We can't wait to see what the JWST will do in a couple of years, what new discoveries it'll make. The only thing that we can say for sure is that these two telescopes will help discover many secrets of the universe. What do you guys think? Drop in your comments and don't forget to subscribe